What's up guys, Josiah here. It is Sunday, December 28th, 2008, and this is going to be the first video in a series of videos that I've been trying to put together for quite a while now, and it's going to be a series of app reviews for OS X. Today I'd like to kick off the series with a review on a program that I've been using quite a bit lately called Handbrake. Now what Handbrake will allow you to do is take a DVD and encode it to various different file formats, and for the purpose of this review, I'm going to show you guys how to encode to one particular file format that is iPod and iPhone compatible. So now I'm just going to run you guys through the process. Just click on Source. You can see I've already inserted the DVD here. You'll also want to download a program called VLC alongside of Handbrake. And what VLC will do, it'll decrypt the DVD and allow Handbrake to encode directly from it all within one step as opposed to some programs which force you to do that within two steps. And I found that not only does this save time, but it's also very accurate and I've had no problems with it so far. So we'll just click on the DVD and that's it. All you have to do is just say open. It'll begin scanning the source and in most cases you're going to have one large chunk of video and then several small chunks. And in that case you're just going to want to ch pick whichever of the largest chunks you see there. Uh, in this case, though, this is a disc from the Mission Impossible series, and there are actually going to be four separate episodes. Now, from this drop-down menu here, you can see that you have the option of putting all four episodes into one large, over three-hour long video. Um, and then you can scroll through the chapter breaks like this. Um, but for the purpose of this review, I'm going to show you guys how to split each episode up into its own file. So you just pick the first episode here. You can see it filters the chapter list down to now just 1 through 7. The duration is right around 50 minutes, which sounds right about right. So then you just rename the file. And then click Browse to make sure it's going to the correct folder. I've put it in the iTunes Music folder. That way it'll automatically sync to my iPod Touch when I connect it. So we'll just say Save. Now you want to check on your output settings. Again, you do want to keep this a, uh, an iPod compatible format, so the MPEG-4 file format should work just fine. These other three formats will not be compatible, but they may give you better file quality, so you're more than welcome to toy around with them if you'd like. Now drop down to here. You want to stick to using H.264, which will give you basically the best quality versus file size. And then uh, I found that you also get the best quality if you allow the program to stick to the frame rate of the source. And then we want to get this all done within one pass. That way it doesn't take too much time. So you go ahead and unclick that. And then over here you just have some basic options. You can choose to let the program fit the video within a certain file size. It's, it's fairly predictable. Uh, then you can also allow it to, to let the bit rate uh, vary slightly and this will still give you a fairly predictable output and then there's the last option here which I've I've actually prefer it will allow you to set the quality to be constant and this will cause the video sizes to vary quite a bit but again this is going to keep all the videos at a constant quality so that that to me is worth it um, and I found that the best quality range is somewhere between about 60 percent here and about 75 percent but you're more than welcome to toy around with these settings depending on your needs. Now you're going to drop down to here and you can see the source resolution is 720 by 480 which is a DVD resolution but this is much too large considering we're going to be using these files on an iPod or an iPod Touch or iPhone and particularly with the last two the resolution of the screen is only 480 by 320 pixels so for instance let's say you have a 16 by 9 widescreen video you're not going to want the width of the video to be more than 480 pixels and likewise let's say you have a full screen like a 4 by 3 aspect ratio video you don't want the height of it to be over 320 pixels there's just no point in keeping the, the video larger than it has to be so we'll go ahead and just click on picture settings and I'll show you guys what I mean now this will give you actually like a live preview of the resolution that you've picked you can see it is at the original resolution of the source we're going to turn off anamorphic here, which will allow you to change the resolution. We'll drop it down to about 320. And again, this will keep the aspect ratio 4 by 3. And all these other options should work just fine by themselves. Uh, occasionally, there will be a light border 
around the edge of the video and clicking automatic here will tell handbrake just to remove the border over here and I've had no problems with keeping this option here um, and then these last options here really aren't important you can scroll through different frames to make sure that the resolution that you've picked is the one that you want to stick with and finally you just want to click close and that is it as far as your video settings and you can go over here to your audio settings and because you do want to keep the file size fairly small you want to stick with AAC as your audio codec of choice you also want to allow the program to pick the sample rate based on the source in most cases it will be 48 kilohertz but occasionally it will down mix the, the uh, sample rate to about 44.1 kilohertz and then finally you want to choose a bitrate of 128 which will give you pretty much the, uh, the smallest file size which, with still a fairly decent amount of quality and then finally you just want to click back here review your settings and if you're happy with that just click start it'll begin scanning the DVD down here and then shortly afterwards it'll begin the encode process now what's neat about Handbrake is that you can actually continue to add file encodes to a queue now we'll go ahead and just work on the next episode here again it will give you chapters 1 through 7 again it's about 50 minutes long and we'll just rename it real quick and then click browse to make sure it's still going to the correct folder it is so we'll just click save everything else here should still be the same you will notice though that under picture settings it's back to a very high resolution so you need to go under picture settings and drop this back down to 320 like you did with the original video check to make sure again that this is a good resolution for you you, you can feel free to scroll through the different screenshots here if you're happy with the results then go ahead and click close and just say add to queue and then all you have to do is just click on show queue you can see the current encode process has this little spinning wheel here and you can click on this it'll show you just a quick snapshot of the settings that you've picked for this particular encode um, and then once it's done with this one it will then move on to this one and now what I want to do is just show you guys a quick preview of what the actual quality looks like we'll let handbrake plug away for a little bit there I'll just pick a quick snapshot of one of my favorite episodes here. And you can see the actual the the quality of the color is fairly good, especially considering how small the file size is going to be. Um, <clears throat> and it does appear slightly pixelated on a large screen, but again, you will be viewing this on an iPod or an iPod Touch or iPhone, so you won't be noticing the pixelation at all. It'll be viewed at its native resolution. So, guys, I hope this video has been helpful to you. Feel free to let me know if you have any questions or comments. Um, also, feel free to subscribe if you'd like. I will be continuing to do more of these app reviews as time goes along here and as I get more familiar with the screen capture program that I'm using, which is Screenium. Uh, for now, though, again, I do hope this video was helpful, and I look forward to hearing from you guys, and I'll talk to you all soon. Bye.